Hi guys and welcome along to another Sonic Academy video with me Chris and Yelly. I'm here with Simon and Simon's been kind enough to take us across uh, his wonderful collection of synths. Some vintage, some mad and some downright bonkers. Some broken. So, so uh, most broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first thing we're going to look at is this sort of Omnicord. Yeah. What, what year are we talking? I think it's early 80s, um, and there's been various versions of them, but this is an earlier one, so it's got a bit more of a basic sound, but it's actually got more of a charm. We had a more modern one, and it sounded a bit naff, because it was almost a bit too polished, polished you yeah. know. Whereas this one's got much more... But it's got quite a few different... Um, But I love it, love it on ballads and sort of more lullaby kind of tracks. I, I think there's no, is there MIDI and stuff with this? No, no. no. You, you have to play it live, so there's, yeah. there's a performance. So, yeah, so you can, you can actually wear it as well, which is quite funny. I've done it before. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> but the MIDI, the MIDI one, we, the, the, there is another one that we have that's MIDI. And yeah. It's quite funny trying to trigger off the samples with it, you know, it just kind oh, of like sort of confuses them a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the old MIDI guitars. Yeah. Uh, this rack here is a lot of sort of, your effects, a lot of stuff not part on. Is it this kind of obsolete or live? Or? It kind of is obsolete in a way, because uh, I think the thing is I love real vintage effects. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't actually have my, I've got like a space echo and a few tape based stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but they're being fixed at the moment. Um, and I do like, I, suppose, I do like the sort of sound of the, the sort of older digital delays. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want something it, it posh fits. sounding, then I just think you can, do so much in the box now. Yeah, yeah. That sounds beautiful, you know. And do you think, I mean, there is the lexicon reverbs that you can get virtually now compared to the £5,000 PCM? Yeah, or, I mean, what do you reckon? I think they stand up, okay. to be honest. Yeah. You know, I think... Uh, I'm the same, but a lot of a lot of heads don't, so... Yeah, well, it's one of those, isn't it? It's, yeah, I don't try and get too tied up with that. I just think if it does the job and it sounds... How it, you know, if it, you know, it's I, th I think it's one thing that you know, going through the course, you walk through, you've lots of classic analog synths here, but you're really not afraid to work just within the box. And yeah, you, you use things when you feel that you need to use them. It's not, yeah, really, you don't just use analog for the sake of it to be a purist, or you don't. No, I mean, we did have loads of analog stuff yeah. at one point. I mean, nails taken quite a lot of kit as well, and you know, um, it, it was weird. I think when plugins first came out, we definitely stayed out of the box mm -hmm. but the way things are going now um, some of the sounds that you can get um, within the computer is just amazing really. <laughs> I think yeah and I suppose in the last four years there's been a bit of a, a leap in quality and just, yeah. just things now becoming a bit more refined and smoother. Let's have a look at uh, six track. Yeah the six track it's... This is a sequential circus correct? <laughs> Um, it's funny, we actually had a Prophet 10, and you know, everyone goes on about the Prophets being a nicer sounding synth and yeah. these being quite basic, but it's actually the charm of that, I think, is the fact that it's got a limited polyphony on it and mm -hmm. the notes could see each other off. I don't know, this, I think it's for the style of music that I like writing, as well. you know, it's slightly quirkier than sort of like a, you know, maybe like a it's trendy... Big, yeah. yeah, rather than a big trendy pad, it's kind of more sort of innocent sound, which I really like, you yeah, know. Yeah, because, I mean, the, the, the Omnicord and this... Yeah, they're very there's, similar. There's a tonal palette. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Uh, one of my first synths that I ever used was a SH-101. Yeah, a yeah, same here, yeah, yeah. Blue, it just blew me away. Yeah. Um, this one's actually... It's a shame I haven't got an ultraviolet pen, but that's um, autographed by Orbital underneath that. Right. Um, okay. It says that even a bent clock tells the right time twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny. But uh, I just love it for the... Yeah, the filters are there. Yeah. I just love it for just being able to make just ridiculous. Yeah. What, what, what do you look for in a synth? What's really... I mean, I think... I suppose down here is myself and Phil. Yeah. This is our first key. Well, we'd yeah, SYB. well, Moby was this famous yeah, one. Go yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I yeah. remember in 19, probably 97, playing New uh, yeah. in my bedroom, or maybe it was earlier. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, and, yeah. And that was me. I was got, I've got a dance music synth. Yeah. So that, 
SY22 is just a world away from Yeah, I just, so I think what it is is every, at one point we had so many synths and they had very similar kind of palettes to them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I just kind of like what, you know, what I've got here really, you know, you've got something that's kind of analog, then you've got something that can be a bit more sort of evil sounding, and that's mm -hmm. kind of rawer. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the, your really naff sort of Whitney Houston digital synth. Mm -hmm. That I like because I, I love the irony factor of it. You know, yeah, I just yeah. love the crappy mallets in it and stuff. <laughs> and this, this, sorry, this the the track that we did the walkthrough. This was the the main chords were just yeah, so, yeah. Swollen was actually written um, using. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just love the dusty kind of digital sound. It's actually quite warm. Yeah. Yeah, no, but the, the, the whole, the, it's that 80s thing, that's yeah. a big production. Uh, and moving along, we have, the, well, the I mean, mini, yeah. The, the daddy of all sense. Yeah. Is it, it, is it, you know, I mean, I've... Well, it's funny, because when it came out, I suppose it was like an affordable Moog for people, because not everyone could afford a huge modular, um, but it is still, for me, one of the fattest sounding analog synths, especially for basses. Yeah. Um, the oscillators always just um, I need some pot cleaner in that. Yeah, but is that not part of the job? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I purposefully keep the fluff in it. Yeah. Because when you hear something like that nowadays, you just think, God, you know, yeah. the dirt, the grime. It's real. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's live. You know, yeah. So it's rather than it being perfect, it's kind of you know. There's an idea for soft synth manufacturers after yeah. six months of the plugin. Start yeah, I've actually seen people moaning on forums saying, "Can you please make it so that you know you can have some of the, the you know the dials fa yeah. failing it and stuff." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I normally just spray a, spray a bit of pop cleaner in that. Yeah. So, for those guys watching that have the virtual version of this, the R two, yeah, I. How do they stand up compared? To, I mean, very few people will ever get to play a touch or see one of these things. But yeah, well, I think um, the pros of having the real thing is you've got the dirt. It's hands-on. Mm -hmm. It's raw or sort of sounding, and there's a definite sort of thing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think the plugin's actually quite good on the level that it's polyphonic, and you can, you know, save banks of sounds. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you know, I think I don't know. Sometimes I kind of like the fact that you never get the same sound twice. You know, yeah, there's yeah. that, but then there's other times when you want to just work on projects and you know have multiple versions of a mini mood. Then it's like, well, it's brilliant for that. You know, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a it's a mixed Swing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swings yeah. and roundabouts. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll take a walk over to uh, this center console that is very strange uh, and has several mics. Yeah, it's a weird. What's, what is this? Doing? What the uh, the blow failed? Well, just the, I mean, these are all vocoders, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just like the classic old vocoder. Uh -huh. um, I don't tend to use it that much now because it's kind of really limited in its palette, really. Right. And you can kind of get the similar sound if you run a uh, an analog oscillator through a plug-in, even. You know, you can right. get a similar sort of sound. But um, this is a, a Waldorf. Yeah. No, I, I, I hadn't heard of these blue fell. Yeah. It's after the named after the James Bond villain, right. Blofeld. <laughs> Which is weird because every time I play it, the cat comes in, you know, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> We've been expecting you. But I'll, yeah, I got that because I used to love the old PPG Wave um, synths because they had a lot of the, you know, a lot of different oscillators Can in I just it. say something? If Phil could turn the camera over, just point it there. No, look. <laughs> <laughs> We've been expecting you, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Bond. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, again, it's a, a quirky. What I love about it is you can load your own samples into the keyboard version, mm -hmm. um, and it's got the old digital sort of PPG Ray filters on it. So, whereas that's kind of maybe you know the Moog's more analog. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, again, it's because kind of, it's got a sequencer built into it mm -hmm. that you can program sort of steps in. I just, I mean, that's again, it just gives it its own character. Yeah. You know? yeah. Do you use it much? I use it more on sort of housey kind of things. Uh, to get that. Or get, you can get really beautiful sort of textures out of it as well. But um, but do you use it for that sort of staccato-y bleepy blop, or do you use it for uh, 
textures more evolving? I, I tend to use it mainly for sequence stuff because yeah. you can, you know, latch it to the clock on the computer and just record stuff in that way. But you know, this, I actually just wanted something. It's got a random function in it, so yeah. you know you can just hit it and it'll come up with a, a random sound. Yeah, yeah. And most of the time they're quite useless sounds, but they always, I don't know, I find, I find sounds that I wouldn't expect quite inspiring, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I quite like daft sounding stuff as well, yeah, yeah. you know. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is, it's, a, it's a very strange sounding synth, yeah. you know. But it reminds me of the old, uh, SID chips that you get in the Commodore 64, you know, and I love 8-bit video games and I mean loads of people are into that kind of stuff now, but nice, I've yeah. never never moved away from it, you know, yeah. I've always always loved the music in Sonic and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, you yeah. know. So. <laughs> and then um, we have this Roland. Yeah, which is, um, I mean I got this because I, I mean I love vocoders, uh, as I say, but I wanted it for live, really, um, so it's quite nice to be able to add harmonies and stuff. It's more organic sounding. It doesn't sound too electronic. Sonic and vocal and bitty and stuff, that's quite a smooth... Yeah, I mean, I mean if you mix that <coughs> in, we say like, because I've got like old 1950s records and you're blending in sort of old sort of music that's samples and, and that, it, yeah, no, you know, it just, yeah, your brain doesn't think it's a vocoder, but as I say, but then, then, the, I don't know what Roland were thinking, because you've got, you know, nice strings. And then you've got... We need to both look at the camera and go, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jackson, Jeffrey Jackson. <laughs> uh, what a bizarre keyboard. It's Actually, so weird. I mean, I mean there is, there's a common thread yeah. running through this studio that the quirky gets in. Yeah, so well, I think, I mean, that synth, I just think it's kind of weird, really. I don't know where they were coming from. I know that they wanted it to be more like a performance keyboard, but when when you'd ever use jazz scat patch, you know. Well, it's, it's, it's something a, that I think Ableton really lacks. Yeah. <laughs> the jazz scat plug you know. Yeah, I exactly. <laughs> I mean, weirdly, I have actually used that though. I've actually ended up using that on an album, that sound, because it just, you know. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, again, uh, this I've never heard, seen, yeah. or touched. The only way I can describe it is it sounds like a really. It sounds almost like a toy, I suppose, but it sounds like the kind of music that you get on a children's program in the, in the 70s and 80s. Currently not in use at the moment. Currently not in use, it needs fixing, so. And, and this, it's quite a, an odd one, that. This Emulator. Is ultimate keyboard, this is what I want, and Very, I know where you live now, and I might yeah. travel up in the dark of night and yeah. steal it. Ferris Bueller's. We say, I'll get stolen, and I'll get yeah. the blame. So. Yeah. <laughs> and the Paraphonic 505. Yeah, that's a, like a string synth. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually beautiful sounding. Um, I mean, this is this is very organy. Yeah, you know, it's but it's got um, it's got it's got you can sort of have it in two halves. You can, so it's sort of like a string string synth, mm -hmm. but then it's got a bass split on the bottom end of it. So I don't know. It's really it's a very vintage sounding. Yeah, so you, it's almost a church organ, but it's yeah, but you, could, you, can, you can have like phased strings and stuff, and I just love all that kind of sound. Uh, is it does it work currently or? It does, but it keeps going out of tune. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine, don't but a lot of the time, again, if things go out of tune, I actually really like that because yeah. everything in plugins is always tuned perfectly. You know, yeah, yeah. I think it's boring to the human ear to mm -hmm. just have everything completely bang on. You know, it's, yeah, I think it is something with plugin designers to introduce those yeah. nuances that you know they, they work so hard in, in getting envelopes and stuff, just detune things yeah. a little or add a bit of noise or a bit of grit. Yeah, uh, and lastly, I think we'll come over. Here. To this section, uh, yeah, and this is where, <laughs> apart from your drum machines, which is we talked about this within the walkthrough, because yeah, but that was I used that on the Swollen remix. Yeah, it's um, the CR seventy eight. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like the main drum machine before they launched the eight hundred eight um, nine hundred nine and stuff like that. And it's yeah. you kind of hear it on Phil Collins records and yeah. stuff like that in the air tonight and Hall and Oates. It, it looks like a heavy box. Is it quite heavy or? It's quite heavy, yeah. It's a pain in the backside to program. You've got like a, a, a little pad that you can tap th things in, but you can't quantize it. So you've got to be a good drummer. So, <laughs> and I'm rubber. So hence Phil Collins, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and 
Seven oh seven. Seven oh seven. Yeah. Pre precursor to eight oh eight and nine oh nine. Yeah. Yeah, I think it came out after. Is that right? Um, yeah, and it's funny because that almost has a cheap sound to it. Yeah. And you kind of hear, you hear. I think Aeroplane used it on quite a lot on their records. Uh -huh. um, Speaking of records. Yeah. Uh, these are something like the samples, really. Yeah. Um, I like this record here. I think it's yeah, it's a good one. That's like the old. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and basically I've got all my classical stuff, um, musicals, rubbish. Mexican morals. Yeah, yeah, there is. It's like <laughs> uh, strings, brass, um, Latin, jazz, spoken word, 80s, 70s stuff down there. So whenever I kind of want, you know, maybe a flute or something, I yeah. kind of know, or, yeah, I kind of got my records and instruments rather than... Coming over, it just has the... Yeah. It's that smell. But I just love it. You see, the thing is, I think if you have... Tchaikovsky uh, Piano Concerto Number 1 in yeah. B-flat minor. Yeah. I mean, that's... No, I'll put it right back in the right place. Yeah. No, if it doesn't matter. It'll <laughs> be cool, yeah. yeah. And, and you know all these records? Most of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they were kind of like the real thing that gave bent its identity really because I was just trying to find daft samples and you know finding charities well it started off just me trying to make tapes for people you know yeah. trying to make daft compilations but uh, then one day I kind of started listening to this Hawaiian music and ah, actually you know you could sample that. So what what does the record collector do today do you still would you still hunt around in charity shops or? I kind of it's weird I've kind of got online. to the point now where if I go into a charity shop you know I'll kind of go through them and I'll be like Got it. Got, got, it. got that one. <laughs> yeah, got that one. Well, everyone's got that one, yeah, you know. I mean, Irish that's, coffee. That's never off at Christmas. That, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I just love them because it's like, um, I and don't do you know. know. Do you know what I love about all these records is the uh, the covers. Yeah, exactly. Some of, some of the covers. I couldn't get rid of them. Yeah. I mean, you know, they didn't cost me that much in, in terms of a record collection, but they've been a right pain, really, to kind of yeah. take with me from place to place. And you yeah. just think, my God. You know, I'm doing all this for Jeff Love's banjo party, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Simon, look, thank you very much Cheers. for, A, the producer walkthrough, and taking us around your very fine studio. I mean, there's some lovely bits of kit in here that we would just love to sit and spend a day plinking and plonking on, and you're a very lucky man to have it. And thank Cheers. You from all of us at Sound Academy, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.